We are Casey and Savannah, and we've been best friends for 10 years. Give me a look at that. They're like a printed, you can see the mountains actually. Over the years, we have been on many adventures, including plenty of travel, hiking the John Muir Trail, starting multiple businesses, building out a camper van, and creating a little homestead in the city. You even may have seen one of our mini DIY stock tank pool videos. We recently bought five acres of raw land in the Upper Cumberland area of Tennessee and are embarking on our biggest adventure yet. Follow along as we build our off-grid homestead from the ground up. All right, so I'm about to head back to the land. I've left Savannah in our hotel room with the dogs, and um, I'm just gonna go check on things. We were supposed to have gotten some rain. If we did get enough rain, I really need to water. We might have some tomatoes that are ready to be picked. I might dig up some potatoes. I'm not quite sure about my hands and how all that will work out, but anyway, I'm gonna take you guys along. I just got back to the farm and I noticed a red tomato so let's go pick it and check it out the early girl living up to her name not a very big tomato there's another one just laying on the ground over here but check out these Roma tomatoes Jeez, it's loaded down can see this one over here as well know what this variety is that tomato that was on the ground you can see somebody had it our chickens will escape speak of the devils I will throw this to them. Oh, there's Sanford. He's a good kitty. Oh man, I never make it in there. Chickens are, look how big the, the chicks are. We're definitely playing the game every day. Rooster or hen. I feel pretty good that at least three of them are hens honestly all the black copper morons they have the like red around their neck i think they all look like hens <sighs> that one right there is a olive egger <sighs> man they've gotten they are so huge that's another olive egger no, that's not. That's a black. That's the other olive egg right there. Just can't tell. I've never had luck growing mint in a container before, but this is a pretty large size. You know, if you don't know this, if you plant, oh, I think that's a bad guy. Is that a ladybug? Um, if you plant mint in like, if I were to plant it in one of these raised beds, it would just take over. So it's good to plant it in a pot. Um, that purple basil has really started growing. And the dill, and this cat is hard up for me to pay attention to him. These are these other planters. They're doing okay. Um, most excitingly, this is a start of a baby tromboncino squash. <laughs> Um, there's another one somewhere. Oh yeah, an even 
and let's see, an even tinier one. Yes. This plant is just like, it's crazy. Here's just the overall main chunk of the garden here. I will do a mini garden tour. So like all of this right here, closest to me is strawberries. These are pine berries. So they're like the white looking strawberries. And then these are just variety, uh, different varieties of strawberries. Um, here, in this bed here are onions. Um, kind of further down that bed is just kind of like lettuce greens and stuff that are basically done for the season. This next bed is all potatoes and then there are bean plants intertwined. Some of them had some pods on them. They're, they're kind of looks like some pretty decent pest pressure on those. These are all this little section here are all different peppers. Savannah did this edge here plant some flowers i think like zinnias and cosmos those there's amaranth in there and i think there's some like marigolds planted around the edge and then wow, the basil looks great she's a lot of different varieties of basil and again like here are some flowers um i think lemongrass in there and then some shallots and then I'm not sure what she planted there. And then these, all these two rows are tomatoes. Um, on the, the side closest to us here is other bean varieties. Some, a little bit of corn here. And then this is like the main corn field. Um, they're like sweet potatoes down through here. And this, I don't remember what she planted. And then all the way down there are like dahlias. So there's, she planted like a bunch of stuff in here, but we think it just, just didn't come up. But like starting like right there, this is all dahlias. I think this dahlia must, I don't know. Um, anyway, they are getting pretty big. You see there? A little more tomato action the tomatoes look really good honestly they have their leaves have been curled up but you can see they're doing pretty good um, I don't honest, honestly understand why <laughs> there's some big Green tomatoes there. These are all brandy wine. This is an orchard. Um, that pretty echinacea there. This is um, comfrey, which I wish we had a lot more of. We have a blueberry here, a butterfly bush. There's some pineapple sage, which is going to explode it gets so huge this is the peach tree that hi kitty this one will just yell at you and tell you better it's bee balm anyway this is the peach tree that we ate peaches off of a blueberry bush 
This is an apple tree, a not doing great blueberry bush. I think that's gonna die right there. And then another apple tree. Look how huge that comfrey is. Um, some salvia, lavender, that's an elderberry, and that is an elderberry. Uh, this is another apple tree that looks like it's not doing great. I have not seen that before. Um, just have some like lavender and salvia. That's Russian sage down at the bottom. And then here we have, oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Japanese beetles. Mm. Oh boy. Yeah, this, this tree. So this tree, this is cedar apple rust, if you can see that. Oh God. Yeah. Let me see if that you can see that better for the lighting. Take it off. So the way those leaves are, that's cedar apple rust. Um, this damage is from Japanese beetles. I really need to go through and pick them off and kill them. Um, they are not your friend. We have a daisy, some more bee balm. That's another daisy. Um, peach tree, peach tree, blueberry, apple tree. So this apple tree actually has apples. However, most, it's also got that cedar apple rust. And a lot of the apples have discoloration. I, I don't know. I don't feel like this right here. I don't feel very hopeful about getting a crop from that. This is, uh, was my best looking apple tree. It does not look good. Do you see all those Japanese beetles? Okay, I gotta do something about that. Back here, this is the rose bush which will probably also be Japanese beetled. You can see these little beans. There's another one. About to dig for potatoes. Oh, that was the mother potato for sure see we got these kind of like purpley red it's exciting here's some beets i harvested and look at these guys so this is you know basically a basket full of potatoes. I only pulled up uh, the left side of this row, so I still need to get this other side, which I will not do today. Let me show you some of these peppers. Those are jalapenos. Can you see how huge they are? Um, Banana peppers, poblano peppers, cool jalapenos. Um, these are little lunchbox peppers. I if you can see those over there. They're cool. And then, like so many, so many peppers. Oh yeah, and these are Tabasco peppers, they grow so crazy. Well, I'm hot and sweaty, so I'll probably rinse up and head back to 
the hotel. I was not very successful, so bright. Um, I was not very successful picking up Japanese beetles. Uh, I read it's best to do it like early in the morning because I guess they're still sleepy or whatever, but I was having a hard time like catching them. Or if I'd get one, then the rest of the beetles would fly off. Uh, I feel, I don't know, a little bummed out about that because you really have to tackle them pretty aggressively early on or they'll start reproducing and um, and it just feels like I just, I can't get back here like early in the morning, um, like tomorrow or so. I just have to pray and hope for the best. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Check out this pretty hydrangea bloom. These beds, they look pretty good. I mean, they probably have needed more water than they've received. But overall, still look pretty nice. The lavender, man, it's really looked good for a very long time. All right, it's our last day in the hotel room. It's Wednesday. We've been here since Thursday, the last week. So, Savannah is better. Do I think we're necessarily ready to go back to the land? To be determined. Um, this will be very interesting. working with a new friend on putting up these cattle panels. Um, we still have like two more sets to put up. So yeah, you can see that there's like two on each side. They're, they just get so heavy. I just don't think you could do a row on both sides of one cattle panel. So we, we like to have each row to have their own set of cattle panels. And we'll do the same thing here. I'm gonna set two there. On this side, though, this is mostly like there's squash here and then beans here. There's a little bit of tomatoes right there. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and have them on their own separate cattle panels.
god, it's huge! Bring it over here, let me see. What one was that on? Uh, like early girl. It's They're so cool. Are you gonna give it to the chickens? Yeah. Nice. So, you can kind of see how bare this is. This is what they will do. purple thing. This setup was chosen by Savannah, not by me. I have my boot on. She's got her boot on. Basically, we have all this sawdust, and th man, she's only been out here for like, well. Does it get compacted a little bit? I like, was thinking, oh my God, we could have like three of those trash cans. Yeah. We use um, wood like flakes for our composting toilet. Really, uh, sawdust is better, but you don't usually just have access to sawdust, but since we have all this, we figured we would put it in um, this bucket that we just bought for yeah. our trash can, so we can use it. I don't. I mean, I don't think it'll last. I guess it'll last a while. Yeah. yeah. So as you saw in our previous footage, we had our wood milled yesterday. Um, it's really cool. It's just really cool to have this like big stack of wood that came from trees on our land as a reminder um, so like we had this this wood cut down or these trees cut down in February and then we had to have somebody stack it and then they actually had to move the stack it wasn't located where it was supposed to be because the sawmill was going to be on uh, in order to be level was going to have to be so high off the ground that they had to move the wood to a different part of our land so they could set up their sawmill better anyway so we had to pay to have that moved twice which that was unfortunate um but now it's milled and yeah it's just it's really it's just really cool and really crazy we'll have to plane it I mean, there's a lot more steps before it is used in our house um, but we're very excited about it please leave us a comment with tips for wood projects you can see there's all this wood some of it would be kind of hard like you've just got this end here that would be kind of hard to I know people do stuff with that but there's a lot of stuff that didn't make it into this neat pile. Um, so, what wood project ideas do you have? Our plan with the wood is, well, we've got to figure out, it's either going to go on the walls in the house or it's going to go on the ceiling. There's definitely not enough to do both. Um, so we have white oak and red oak. And the red oak is going to be the countertops in the kitchen um, and on, on an island that we're going to do. The other thing I wanted to make a note of was these trees were going to have to be cut down eventually. They probably could have lasted like a few more years, but there was this huge um, white oak tree right behind our shed that we actually probably should have had cut down before we put the shed in place, but we thought it we were going to keep it but then when I started researching how to know if a tree is healthy and blah 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 I realized that it was not healthy and probably did not have a lot of life left in it and we didn't want to take the risk of it falling on the shed so you know it was just like we we're gonna have to get these trees cut down anyway 
difference. If you took that cost out, this wood is definitely a lot cheaper than if you were to go to buy white oak. Even still, after all the expenses, I still think it's cheaper than if you were to buy white oak. But it doesn't seem to be like a lot cheaper. Do with that what you will. But it'll be really cool to have wood in our house that came from trees in our backyard. Let us know if you want us to do a video on the cost breakdown of, you know, how much we paid for all the different components and like what the total cost was for all the wood. Hello everyone. I am finally able to walk a little bit. I want to go put this cover crop on the bed that Casey pulled all the potatoes out of. Casey doesn't want me to do it. I drove uh, the van to the dump for her because she doesn't like driving the van with the trailer on it. So since I'm up, I'm like, it won't take that long just to seed this. I'm not gonna water it. Um, maybe she'll do that or we'll just wait till it rains in like a couple days. But I wanted to show you guys that we figured out that this is not a tromboncina squash because that's clearly a spaghetti squash. This is apparently the side we planted the tromboncino squash on. It's definitely way behind. This plant has just been really crazy. Throwing another one up there. And it's actually only been 12 days since Casey showed you that when it was a tiny green ball. And it is very gold. So it's really golden and that is an indicator that it's ready. Casey also did the fingernail test and your her fingernail will not even puncture the skin. So... It actually started out really pale yellow. I mean, it was green, then it was pale yellow, and then it's, I mean, ready to pick. I don't think we're gonna pick it. I think we'll wait till um, the end of the week or something. But it's just wild that 12 days ago, it was a just being formed fruit, and now I think we could pick it and eat it. Also, because we had so much rain after not having rain for like a month, everything is growing really great. The tomatoes have grown significantly. Everything's green. Casey's actually gotten a good amount of ripe tomatoes off of here. And I see one down there. You probably can't see it around there. I'm not going to go in there. That would be dangerous, but that could be picked. I don't know if you can tell, but everything, even the animals, is just so huge and there's even boards that seeds that I planted in there that never came up that are now coming up um yeah everything is looking there's a flower over there all right this is the first actually this is not the first flower we grew from seed but I planted these seeds a long time ago I think it's an African daisy I have the thing up there so I'll have Casey look at the tag and see I also wanted to point out that there's some watermelons growing that I planted over here that Casey didn't really know what they were. We actually have spinach that strangely has not bolted over here. And then um, for some reason, the corn came out so sporadically, came up. I mean, I planted this whole thing with corn and we've got a few little things down there. And then these, which look good, those don't. So corn isn't great right now. Also, these little plants that Casey didn't know about, those are okra. And they have been that size for a month and a half, two months almost. Really long time. Oh my gosh. The basil is really, really doing good. African daisy, but I wasn't sure what. It says carrots. Carrots, what does that say? African daisy, African something cape marigold i think it's an african daisy and it's called it's like the cape marigold i think it can be a lot of different colors but that one's orange that one looks orange there's one right here it isn't as big oh and there's one right here i think i thought these were spinach for a while okay it is so hot out here i got this packet from Bot botanical interest they were having like a really big sale i got a bunch of cover crops because that is definitely a method we're going to be trying out. And the good thing about this buckwheat is that it only takes 35 days for flowers to form after planting. Um, it's for warm temperatures. It's really frost sensitive. So 
Um, I bought a bunch of, this is a big pack. It's, you know, if you get uh, some seeds from botanical interest, they're usually a little smaller than this. So this is supposed to seed 165 square feet. Our beds are about 48 feet by three feet, which is a little bit less than 165 feet. So I'm just gonna try to sprinkle this whole packet on this row. All right, holy moly, it is so hot. Um, I ended up having to use like maybe a fourth of this second packet of buckwheat, but I got it all spread out as evenly as possible. But you know, when you're just sprinkling seeds with your hands, you just don't really know what's going on. Would like to cover and compost, but I can't, that's too much work. I can just barely walk around. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm just hoping that when it rains in a few days that that's gonna send it down. Since we did just pick the potatoes, there is like a little bit of loose dirt instead of just like a layer of thick sand. So um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I have a lot of these, they were on sale. Um, so I definitely can reseed it if they don't come up. Uh, but anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. Come back next week to see what other homesteading stuff we are doing and also subscribe to our channel because uh, that's how you find out when we post videos. We're talking about posting a few more a week or maybe one more a week than just the one we do post. So if that's something you're interested, leave us a comment and let us know. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.